Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Um, you know, obviously I wanna make this as useful for you guys as possible since you guys are the hackers. Um, I'm just here to kind of teach you how to use Teller, what Teller's about, and um, we can go from there. But, you know, honestly, like if you, the plan, I'm just going to explain Teller for a little bit, what we do, how, how you can kind of build on us. And then I was gonna sort of go through building on top of Teller, but if you'd rather, you know, we, we can use one of your projects. I can literally help you build one of your projects live. Like we, we, we can use this uh, this time for whatever's going to be fruitful. You know, there's there's not a whole, you know, there there's eight people right now in the call. Um, so it's not, we can literally just build everybody's project right now if we wanted to. Um, so let's make it useful. Um, like I said, my name is Nick from Teller CTO. Uh, Teller is a decentralized Oracle on top of Ethereum. Uh, what this means is that we help you get off-chain information into your smart contracts. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen the other bounties, uh, mainly from Chainlink, which is also a decentralized Oracle. Uh, so if you know about Chainlinks, um, they have sort of those price aggregators, which basically there's prices on chain that you can go read. Teller works in a very similar way. There are prices that we have a network, a, de a decentralized network of miners that post prices onto our network and you can go read them. Um, that's basically all you need to know to integrate them into your smart contracts. <laughs> um, it, we'd love for you to look at how it works and why it's actually decentralized and how all the crypto economics work. But from, from a standpoint of figuring out how you're going to use it in your smart contracts, you should know that if you need a cryptocurrency price or some other price information, Teller should be your source. Um, you know, we've we had like a few examples that I can just give. Uh, so we just finished up uh, the ETH India hackathon, and to just kind of go over who won that, we had uh, a person who built a decentralized options platform. So you can build financial options settling to the Teller price. They were week long options. Another person um, they built it was it was a DAP for trading on Uniswap, but in, to prevent slippage on Uniswap, what they allowed you to do was look at the teller price to make sure that you weren't going to, to get eaten alive whenever making a trade on Uniswap. So that was really cool. And then another person just built a simple betting website. So you, if you wanted to bet on whether or not the price of a cryptocurrency was going to go up or down in a day, uh, it used the teller price. So it, it, there were a bunch of really simple projects, but it, it sort of showed what Teller can do and, and we got some great feedback on um, making our documentation better. So, you know, other projects notable in the space that would say use oracles and could use Teller, um, you have stable coins. So if you're looking at say like a maker type design or even even something more creative like an ample forth, those all use oracles um, and obviously lending platforms as well. So Aave, um, Compound, uh, and then derivatives, BZX, Synthetix, all of these protocols use oracles in their design and Teller could be a possibility where you could have a protocol very similar to one of those uh, that settles to Teller and we'd love to work with you guys to build those. So um, that said, if you guys have any questions, throw them in the chat. If you want to present, have me walk through your project, um, feel free, uh, either blurt it out or talk in the chat. But if not, I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, setting up Teller. So I'm going to share my screen or at least attempt to share my screen and we'll see. Okay, so can you guys all see my screen? Yes, okay, I'm getting a nod. Okay, so what we're, I'm going to walk you through building on Teller, um, but if you come to Teller's documentation, docs. Uh, and then you come down to user contracts. I'm just going to be walking through this. <laughs> so um, if, you, if you don't have any specific questions, or you don't wanna watch me code, you can just come here and hopefully it, it should be relatively, hopefully it's the exact same and we don't run into any hiccups. Um, so I will pull up a little git bash here and then we'll go into some code and then uh, we'll make a new directory. Uh, we'll call it uh, Gitcoin hack. 
um, CD get coin hack. And then what you can do is we'll do a truffle init. So we're just gonna make a new truffle project. So shout out to all the truffle guys there. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do first off, since NPM always takes forever, uh, we'll do an NPM install using Teller. So this is the, the Teller package. And what, what this is going to do is it's going to pull in the Teller smart contract system and all of the necessary files uh, into your repository. So um, we'll come here and we'll go and we're going to open it. So what did I call that? Gitcoin hack. Um, so we're gonna pull it up and which you guys can see right away, uh, we have some contracts and we're just gonna make a new one here. So make a new one and for ease, I'm gonna go, so this is our GitHub. I'm going to go, we have sample using Teller. So if you want a sample repository that uses Teller, this is it. Um, you can just use, you can just kind of copy the code here. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and then we'll edit it and we'll tweak it to actually do something fun. So uh, cut and paste. I hate how the, the little zoom box always gets in the way of where you're trying to cut and paste. Um, but we'll cut it. Uh, and then what we're going to do, we'll save it as we'll call it gitcoinhack.soul. And we'll just call it something different. And to walk through this one, um, a little bit. So the way that, so the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to import using Teller. So this package, this is what it'll be in your node modules folder. Uh, this is what that npm install put in there. And this is going to put in the using teller.soul file. So you're just importing it in. Um, and then if you guys aren't aware of how this works in Solidity, uh, you can just say con contract Gitcoin hack is using Teller. <laughs> so, and what this does is th this is sort of shorthand for it's the same as taking all of those functions in using Teller and pasting them on the bottom of this contract. So it's, you, you get access to all of those functions. Um, and then the only caveat you have to know is it sort of initialized in a weird way. So using Teller also takes some constructor arguments. Uh, so that whenever you're doing is using Teller to pass constructor arguments, um, you would pass it into your constructor here. Uh, it just needs the address of your Teller contract you would have to pass it in here and then in using Teller, pass it in the Teller address. So it's, once you get used to it, it's not that bad. Um, <laughs> but if you guys are just curious as far as how Solidity works. Um, the other things that you're going to need uh, is a Teller ID. Um, the Teller ID, so each IDs, right now we support 51 different prices. Uh, they correspond to different um, assets. So ID one is the ETH US dollar price. ID two is the Bitcoin US dollar price. Um, ID four, for instance, is a 24 hour average Bitcoin US dollar price. And we have 51 of those. Uh, know which one you need. For this purpose, uh, we can just use number one since we're gonna spin it up on a local test node. <laughs> um, and you can just pre pretend what, that it's whatever you want it to be. Uh, but then you also have to need to know the granularity. Um, so I'm sure you guys all are all familiar with Solidity enough to know there's no decimal places. Um, so whenever Teller pushes values on chain, usually we include like six zeros at the end um, or multiply all the values by six. So like if the ETH US dollar price is, you know, $240.50, we'll just multiply that by, you know, with six zeros, it's like a million. And then you can, if you wanted to actually get that $240 price, you would have to divide by a million. Okay, so that's how you initialize the whole thing. Um, now we can sort of write another function. In using Teller, there's just update values. So whenever you, you do this using Teller, you have access to two different functions. You have get data before and get current value. For most of you, get current value is going to be just fine. For a hackathon, um, this, this is the easiest way to do it. 
Um, and both of these functions return three different things. Did get, this is a Boolean. Uh, yeah, true or false, did, did it successfully grab a value? Uh, the current value and then the timestamp, so how old that value is. Um, get data before, the reason that you would use get data before is, let's say you wanted the price of um, ETH US dollar, but you wanted it that wasn't, it's at least an hour old. And the reason you would want old data on Ethereum or on Teller is because Teller actually, we don't really have finality in our values. So if you, if you guys know, um, I'll just take a break for a second. The way that Teller works is we have a network of miners who compete to add that value on chain. So they're competing at a proof of work challenge um, to put this, say the value of ETHUS dollar on chain. And anyone who puts a value up can be disputed. So any token holder of Teller can say, hey, he lied, that's not the actual ETHUS dollar price. And then what happens is the value gets taken off chain and gets put up for a vote as far as whether or not it was good or not. Um, you want to wait, you may want to wait to see, hey, is this value going to get taken down? Is this, you know, is somebody going to get potentially slashed or, or penalized for putting up a bad, bad value? Um, the concept is actually very similar to uh, a Bitcoin or Ethereum. So if you know, like if you deposit Bitcoin on Coinbase, you usually have to wait an hour. So just of confirmations. And the reason is, is that Bitcoin lacks finality. It, it could fork off and you could be left on sort of not the right chain. So you want to make sure that Bitcoin, you know, Coinbase makes you wait for six confirmations or an hour. Um, you may want to wait an hour. Um, before you read the teller values. And yeah, so it, it's up to you. Like I said, for a hackathon, you can use get current value and depending on the structure of your smart contracts um, and how comfortable you are with checking it on the side or how centralized you're gonna have it, you can either use get current value or get data before. You know, if you're only allowing an only owner to run this, then just use get current value and run it whenever you think it's good. Anyway, caveat, uh, but it does take limit and offset. So limit and offset, um, these are two functions for looping through the different values. So for get current value, uh, limit would be one, you're just checking one value and you're offsetting from the most current one zero. Um, the reason you would want to do different loops going back, so you, you're like, tell her, why didn't you guys just loop from through all the data and then get, get the most recent one. Well, Solidity actually, uh, it doesn't let you do that. You run out of gas. If, if the number of loops is going to be too big, the way that Solidity actually unpacks for loops. So uh, this, this may be getting a little too technical, but it's, it will look at sort of the max number of loops it could possibly do. And then what you're gonna have is, um, yeah, you could potentially just run out of gas. Like if, if Teller had, you know, 2000 values in there, you'll run out of gas trying to update your value just because e even if it's not going to run out of gas, it, it will think it's going to run out of gas. So, um, and it won't let you run the function and, and that's a bad thing. Okay, so hopefully you guys learned a little something there, but we'll write a nice little um, simple update function here. So we're gonna write check values. Um, so this will be like, like our, so we're going to, first we're gonna update the values. Uh, and so we need a limit and offset. We'll go back, we'll check 100 and we'll go back 99. Um, it's just, you know, it'll check the most recent 100. Usually you can loop through at least you know, a few hundred on Ethereum and you won't run out of gas. Just depends on what else you do in your function. Um, we also make this public or else, since we're calling it from an internal function. And then what we're gonna say is if current value is greater than 100, um, I'm in Python mode in my head. We're going to Internal returns bool. What we'll do is we'll return true. And then 
else return false. Okay, so as you can see, we're just gonna check whether or not it's greater than 100. You could have people lock up money, and if the current value is greater than 100, um, you could pay out money. You know, you could write a simple, like, bi binary option off of this contract. It wouldn't be very hard. It would just have to hold some ether. Um, so now what we're going to do is we'll save this. Uh, we'll come back over here. Um, and now we'll run Truffle Compile and see if, see if I got any typos. See if we can find any typos. Okay, um, compiled successfully. Also, so now, you know, a lot of a lot of tutorials they just stop here, but they they don't show you, you know, the big things you're going to want to do for a hackathon. You're going to want to migrate it, and you're going to want to test it locally. So we'll walk you guys through doing that. Um, and how um, we're going to walk you guys through with just we have my sample. Blah sample migration files. So go over to migrations and tell their migrations. So just cut and paste this bad boy and then open new file. And then we'll call this one tell it migrations. JS. Okay. Now so there's two different ones. So if you see this is a whole lot of contracts. Um, and the reason is, is that this is, it, we deploy a mock teller system for you. So that using teller library that we imported for you, um, it actually has like an entire fake teller system. So you don't actually need to spin up a network of decentralized miners uh, to test out your contracts. Um, you can just type in, you know, you can just mine the values in JavaScript and say like, hey, this is the price. And that way you can test reading it. Um, that way it's, it's a whole lot easier and you can use just JavaScript testing for it, and you don't need to actually use like Ring Fee or or one of those, which is always super annoying. Um, if you actually if you don't want to use the the mock teller system, if you wanted to use Ring Fee, this is down here. So all you would do is add in the address. So this is like our Ring Fee contract address, and you can do it there. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, we're not importing sample using teller. Uh, we are using, what's the name of our contract? Gitcoin hack. So we're going to replace those. Um, and yeah. Okay. So now that we replace those and if you remember our constructor took arguments, uh, so we need the request ID. We're just going to use request ID one since it's a test and nothing matters. Um, and then it's going to automatically pull the teller master. This is the teller address um, from the one that deploys previously. And then you're going to have here, so we just have a sample um, 1 million granularity in our contracts. Okay, so now we've got to start Ganache. So if you did a truffle init, you'll have to know um, you'll want to like uncomment out the development server so you can start a Ganache. Ganache is local. This is, see, now I have an Ethereum running on my local machine. And now we'll run Truffle Migrate. We'll deploy our, our code here onto our local Ethereum. Uh, oh no. Fails. I could not find artifacts, get coin hack from any sources. Why not? Did I not name it? Ah. <laughs> it's not GTI hack, it's get coin hack. So hopefully that's the one uh, typo of the, the tutorial. So we'll compile it and then migrate it again. And then we'll run the tests. Um, I 
and you guys will also be able to see, so we'll go over see how much it actually costs. Um, so deploying all of these fake things, this costs 0.15 ETH. So um, as you guys can imagine uh, deploying the actual teller system, which is a whole lot bigger than this, costs quite a bit, uh, especially since this was just 20 GWA gas prices and currently it's like awful on the mainnet. Um, and then Justin posted on the chat, and I don't know what that image is, Justin. Oh, it's just like a celebration, like, yay, oh, compiled. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Next, we're going to do some tests. So create a new file. And once again, we're just going to go back to the sample using Teller and, and cut and paste some tests. So you guys don't have to watch me write a whole test. Uh, but I'll walk through how it actually works. Um, So it's the one test in sample using color. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Um, we want to name it. Um, test Gitcoin hack.js. Okay. So this is JavaScript testing in Truffle. Um, it's, it's the way that we test things, um, at least locally. So you can write lots of tests this way. Um, so a few things that we'll, we'll show you kind of well, first we'll we'll do our replaces so we're not importing sample using teller. Um, and oh wait, darn it! Made a mistake there, so it's gonna have to be lowercase. Um, but yes, as Justin just said, if you guys have questions. Um, Definitely type them here because I want this to be useful for you guys. Um, even if it's just normal solidity or coding questions, happy to help if you guys get stuck. Um, okay, so that looks about good. So the first thing that you're going to be doing is um, importing Gitcoin hack and then importing your teller pieces from your using teller package. Uh, this little script right here. Um, this is for like advancing the time. So whenever you're using a ganache, so like a fake Ethereum, you can fast forward time or block number. Um, and this is for testing. So if you remember where we wanted to test uh, like the get value before, you wouldn't want to have to wait an hour to, to check if that updates. You can just advance time. So this is a nice little snippet of code. You'll just want to keep around if you're, <laughs> if you're writing stuff on Ethereum a lot. Um, but okay, so we're going to write uh, a function here. So what was our, I think it was what check value test uh, async function, and then okay. So the first thing that you need to do. So this little loop right here. Um, it's this first little for loop. And this is what mines a value. So you'll see it's like web, it's really long and um, not quite fun to read, but it's going to mine this value. So you can say like, it's going to mine ID one. Um, the string one is actually the nonce. So <laughs> we're, we don't actually need a correct nonce since this is the, the test contract. Um, but we'll say that our value is 5,000. And then if you remember, we had a granularity of six zeros, one, two, three, four, six. Um, so that should mine a value of 5,000. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll run Gitcoin hack. And then it, what was our value? Check values. Okay. Check values. Was it check value or check values? Check values. Um, and then what you'll want to do, so like since it returns a Boolean, we'll run let my result equal. And then, so if you just run a function that updates state, what, what's going to happen in Solidity is, um, or in kind of Web3 world, is this is going to return back to you like the transaction hash and all the log details. We don't want that. We just want this whether it's true or false. And the way that you do that on a non-call function, so like a non-read function, is you just put 
dot call. And that should work to just, it'll return us um, true or false. It won't return us like transaction hash or, or one of those. So that should work. And then what we're going to do is assert, um, and you can see up here, um, assert the Gitcoin hack current value. We're going to call that and or no, we're not, we're not asserting that. We're asserting that my result, <laughs> uh, assert my result equals equals true. Uh, should be true. Fails. Okay, so I think that's all we need to do. Um, yes, so now we'll come back over, we'll run shuffle test and fingers crossed it actually works. That's what I, I gave this talk. If you guys, if any of you guys watched this last week, I, I gave it before and, and I had a little typo and I could not for the life of me figure out what it was until right after I got off, of course. Um, okay, cannot read property new of undefined. Um, why is this not working? So this was... Uh, there we go. It's the little things. Wow. First try. Um, okay. So can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Um, You're getting really good at this, Nick. I know, right? Yeah, like eighth times the charm. Um, <laughs> so that was, this is kind of just the basis, basic way to, to use Teller. Um, you know, some of the things that we would love to see people working on, you know, that, that can be useful is just, we want to see some cool, cool designs. You know, we love how, we love people being able to experiment in actually decentralized way. So, um, you know, if, if you guys are wondering just how Teller works, definitely reach out to us. You know, we'd love to tell you why it's actually secure and why it's a better choice than some of the other oracles. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to see um, just what you're building, um, if, if it would work with Teller, you know, reach out. Um, I'd love to talk to you. So um, does anybody want to, I guess, anybody here want to share kind of a project that they're working on? We can, we can talk through. We'd love to kind of we got like 25 more minutes. I, I'd love to help you guys work through any problems if, if you guys have any questions. So, or not. Um, what, um, so you have, you have three bounties uh, with the hackathon. And um, the one that really caught my eye was the best original use case. Uh, what are you expecting to see? What have you seen in other hackathons? Uh, with oracles and you know your type of technology. Sure, I mean the the easy example. So like you know the the one that won it last time. So you know we we thought the slippage idea was pretty cool. So using using oracles to prevent slippage, um, but, but and th there's a lot of other sort of examples of of just sort of creative ways that you, you can build, use oracles on these networks. So we all always just think of like the DeFi primitives, so derivatives and stable coins. Um, but what I think, you know, more, more and more, you can, you can build betting apps that don't already exist. Um, <laughs> so the, those are, you know, most of this stuff is just, uh, if you actually want something to be decentralized, you, you really need a, you really need a decentralized oracle. So, so what sort of value transfers can, can you have happen um, if, if you actually have this information? So, you know, so some of the fun ones that I like are people playing around with, with different monies. Um, so whether it's just different type. Um, so you, you can have ETH based stable coins, but you can have Bitcoin based stable coins. You can have Euro based stable coins. Um, all just with, with sort of different designs that can use oracles. People usually use oracles as like liquidation me mechanisms, um, but just 
playing around with who can run those functions, how you vote. Um, it's not necessarily being original with the use case of Heller, you know, reading a value on chain. It, it's tough to sort of get creative, uh, but it, just having the use case in and of itself, whether or not you wanted to DAOify an original protocol that's, you know, already out there or something like that, th those are what we're looking for and those are what we hope to see. Awesome. Okay, um, I have a question. So what would be a use case, a good use case for a card game? I'm just looking card. for suggestions. I'm thinking of making something like, I don't know, poker and you just wager, you know, whatever ERC20 token or crypto you want. Yeah, I mean, well, you could have, you know, if you had ETH, um, if you had a card game, for instance, that, that had ETH locked, then you could, the easiest example for an Oracle would be, well, let's say you you wanted to take the price risk out of the game. So you wanted to, you know, pay out based upon the US dollar value of the Oracle. Um, you know, that's one that you could use. You could use different prices as, as random numbers, um, different, different ways you could do that, or like inputs as random numbers. Um, yeah, those would be, you know, the, the card game piece, it's always a, uh, those are more just fun to, fun to build, I guess, on Ethereum. <laughs> so you, you can you, you can figure out which ones ha haven't been done, I guess, would be, would be the way to go about that. But, you know, looking at Ethereum now, uh, I don't know if people are going to need fully decentralized trading, trading decks on main nets, but we'll see. So as I understand them, oracles are a way to do API calls outside of the blockchain and then bring them inside of to your dApp essentially uh sort of um so we're we're not set up like that um oracles are just basically ways to get information from off chain so like mm -hmm. if you think about like you can have two two sort of oracles um you can have like there there's one type of oracle like let's say you need the eth us dollar price in, in your dApp um you could say like well we'll just go read the Coinbase's API and bring it back on chain. That's one way. Or you, you could have a group of people just say what the ETH US dollar price is. So, you know, like you could all just have, that. that's more how Teller works. We have a group of people. We don't care if you get it from Coinbase's API or Binance's API. We just want the ETH US dollar price, which is more of this, a vague terminology um, that's sort of up to the community to vote on whether or not it's accepted. Um, and the reason that you want to do that is is that API calls are not the best when it comes for, to decentralization, because if you're just relying on one API call, then that central server could just shut down and not fulfill your request. So, you know, even like if, if you're relying on Coinbase's API for your dApp and Coinbase shuts down their API, then the Oracle would return zero uh, and technically it would be correct. So... You, you would want you would want something that actually fits with what you're ultimately trying to do. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. yeah so how would you categorize the data that uh, is brought in by oracles? Is it mostly used for DeFi stuff, or could it be as sim simple as you know going to Giphy and you know, bringing gifts or something like that? Yeah, I mean, right now it's all DeFi stuff um, that's being put on chain. So if you you know, this is, it's just sort of main chain Ethereum. Like what are the use cases at the moment? I'm, I'm sure you guys have noticed like gas prices are insanely high. Mm -hmm. um, so since it's really expensive to do things on Ethereum, um, usually like the lower value use cases of say gaming on the blockchain or um, just doing some random API call for fun. Um, it's usually priced out whenever it costs a dollar or two to do this. Um, so, you know, I, I think most of those pieces are going to be sort of moved over to side chains, but I think like in the future, um, oracles can be, I think there, there's like more of a future of oracles, which, which sort of coincides with, um, with a lot of these layer one scaling. So not on Ethereum, uh, because like once, once the layer one scale, then you can, you can do things like you, you can return, you know, just generic API calls for people. Or you could even, you know, our original use case that we were looking to do is we were bridging different chains. So we were returning like block headers from Bitcoin or from different Ethereum chains and putting them on each other. So that way you could 
verify transactions on, on other chains. Um, and that would be oracles that could do that as well. Um, but right now, most of the use cases are all just DeFi related because oh, okay. we, yeah, I mean, right. It's just uh, what's, what's currently being done on Ethereum and it's gambling on cryptocurrency prices. So. So how do you feel about Cosmos? As I understand it, Cosmos tries to make interoperability between blockchains. So let's say that completely took over and every blockchain was connected. How would that affect Teller? It would be super cool. I mean, we we, we would love for scalable blockchains, um, scalable and decentralized blockchains. I think the big problem with Cosmos right now is just that there's, there's kind of limited use case or limited use over on Cosmos. Um, you know, we, as, as far as Teller goes, we want, we want to be where the demand is. Um, and right now the demands on Ethereum, if, if Cosmos had a bunch of demand for oracles over there, we could, we would be more inclined to kind of go over there and provide some, some data. But uh, yeah, as, as of now, most other chains have not a whole lot going on. But cool. Anybody working on the Teller project they want to share? No? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, any products you want to throw out there that are just cool? Like you'd like to see this integrated with Teller? Um, so we recently just put out a, a gold price. Um, so you, you can go query the gold price. I'd love to see a gold stable coin. Somebody build one of those. That would be cool. Um, and if you guys need need help designing a stable coin, definitely reach out. We have we have a lot of good ideas on that. So that would be one. And then also just synthetic Bitcoin. Everyone everyone is failing at making synthetic Bitcoin. So if you guys want to give it a shot, uh, it would be cool. Would explain that. What do you mean by synthetic Bitcoin? So just a, a Bitcoin token. So it represents the price of Bitcoin over on Ethereum. Really? So. That's hard. It's it's proven hard. Um, I mean, so similar to like a, so like Maker. So Dai is a, a synthetic dollar. So it, it's a decentralized dollar. That yeah. It's backed by ETH, but the way that it's backed by the, it's not backed by any U.S. dollars. It just uses an oracle, the one run by Maker, um, to maintain that peg. You could do the exact same thing with Bitcoin. You could have a similar system where instead of pegging to the ETH US dollar price, you're pegging to the ETH Bitcoin price. And then you have a short ETH BTC, which is essentially a long BTC token on Ethereum. Um, and there's a lot of different structures you can do. So like, you know, Synthetics, for instance, has an SUSD, which is a synthetic US dollar as well, but it's just sort of built differently. Um, so there, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. And there's a lot of um, cool pieces. If if you want to get into stablecoin design, it's a it's a slippery slope and a a big it's it's a big topic. But you know, we we would love to see people starting to build those and um, especially built on on Teller. And somebody on the chat asked like USDC. USDC is different. So USDC is the same as Tether. Um, that's where you just put one dollar in a bank account and you say, you know, you you issue a token that represents that dollar. And then people theoretically have the ability to trade in those tokens for those physical U.S. dollars. So there's no Oracle needed. Um, it's okay. just, yeah. Not, not decentralized in any way either. Because if you want it to be decentralized, you have to sort of rely on collateral that's not a physical U.S. dollar. Oh, okay. So, um, cool. Cool. All right, thanks for the info. When are um, you and your engineers available, just in case you know, there are any questions? Yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm available kind of sporadically anytime, um, but we're, we're Eastern, Eastern U.S. time, so uh, those are kind of our business hours. But if you feel free okay. to join our, join our Discord or our Telegram, um, you know, or, and just reach out and we'll get back to you ASAP. Our awesome mom in Philly. So... Also, the town square. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Shout out. Um, but cool. No, I look forward to seeing what you're building. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your information.
Thanks. Thanks, Derek. Have a good one. Anyone else have any questions? Maybe it then. All right. Well, I think that concludes it. Unless you want to no, add thanks. anything else, Nick? Yeah, thanks for coming. So All right. um, let me know if you guys need anything. Great. We'll do. We'll, we'll send over the uh, YouTube link when it's done. Cool. Thanks, Justin. Right. Cool. Bye. Great job. Yep. See you.